I got my line? Shit. I'm Drew from Green Rabbit Productions, and if you don't know the channel, we do a lot of color grading, some Da Vinci tricks, things to help you become a better colorist and understand Da Vinci Resolve a little bit better. So you can jump onto my website and you can look around and you can go and download some footage, which are connected to a lot of my YouTube clips, and then you can learn how to color grade some of the clips that I've done along the way. Today we're going to go from this look here to this look here. So I decided to go for a warm, tealy orange kind of look, I would say. Very saturated. A little bit contrasty, we've softened this window a lot and it all looks a lot better. So how do we do it? Well, let's jump in and have a look. It's quite easy. So because we're good colorists, in our first node, we're going to check our balance, make sure that's all correct. Let's find a part that is whitest. And when it comes to white, you want to be in the high 200 range. So the high 200 range for your white. So anything below 255 is you want to be aiming for. You want to find the brightest spot, but you don't want to find the spot that is overexposed. If anything's overexposed, that actual number isn't going to give you a good white balance because some of those colors don't exist properly anymore. So let's find a nice range. So this is a good one here. And as you can see, we're a little bit off. We're pretty good. Red and green are quite good. Blue's a little bit off. So what we're going to do is push a little blue in our whites, which is our gain. Then we have nice even numbers there. Now let's move to our black. Let's find the darkest point in our image which is probably the saucepan here, or maybe the hair. So as you can see, we look pretty good. Maybe added a little bit of blue in, not a lot. And we look pretty good. So we'll call that good for now. Let's add a little bit of contrast to our image. So let's bring down our blacks just a little bit and bring those mid-tones down just a little bit. Now let's add a little bit of saturation so we're going with that really saturated look. So let's add in more than I normally would. 71 looks pretty good. Let's add a little bit of contrast. There looks quite nice. Let's check our balance again. Because it will change when you add in saturation and contrast. A little bit warm in the mid-tones. That's just a little bit of blue in. And I think that looks pretty good. So I've gone from this image here to this image here. We already have a nice saturated neutral look. We don't really have anything that's too exciting. So let's move on to our second node. So let's create a new node, Alt S on Windows. Alrighty, so what I want to do here, I want to actually take some of this light away from the window. I feel like it is way too much. So let's create a power window and let's create a simple mask around this window and soften it right out. Okay, so now if we were to bring that down, let's say we do that in our gain. As you can see, we're affecting this plant here. We don't really want that. So what we want to do is make a selection using our qualifier. So we don't want hue or saturation. We just want luminance. Now let's bring those lows right up and then shift H to bring up your highlights or of course view highlight and highlight. Okay, let's bring it right up. Now let's soften it right down. You always want to have a nice soft key. Let's blow it right out. Clean it up just a little bit. Even a little bit more. Shift H again. Okay. So we have a nice selection. Let's bring it down just using our gain wheel and our gamma. So we've gone from this here to this here. And that just softens it down a lot. Because our subject is what our eye wants to be focusing on. The brightest part of the image is always the first thing someone will look at. So we take that down a little bit. Now our focus is on this man here. Alrighty, so let's make some more nodes. But let's use parallel nodes. So Alt P and we'll create four more. And let's clean up that node graph. So clean up node graph. Right click, clean up node graph. And we'll space them out a little bit better. I feel like when you clean it up does get a little jammed together. So in this one, we're going to call this one Skin Tone. Skin Tone. Now let's make that selection using the qualifier. So again, click, Shift H to bring up that selection. And as you can see, we have a lot going on. Let's refine that selection. So I'll bring those lows up a little bit. We're already getting a better key. Bring that width down a little bit. And Soften it right out because we still want 
a nice soft key. Even though we want just this area, do we want it to be nice and soft? We don't want that dancing noise we always talk about. So let's use a power window. Let's put a circle around this bad boy's face. And let's bring it in, soften it right out. Let's see if we can get rid of some of this. So, we just want to keep moving it around somewhere that looks quite good. And again, really try and soften out your selection. So, I think what we can do is just bring it up just a little bit. Let's go back to our qualifier. Again, just moving it around. Do we get something that we're happy with? Okay, so we'll call that good. So now we have our skin tones. And we're going to leave that for now, and we're going to come back to it. It is important to do it now than later on, otherwise it's going to be hard to get that nice selection with your key. Alrighty, so let's move to our next node, and we're going to call this one Look. Now, I know a lot of people use layer nodes when they do skin tones, but I personally think parallel node works better. I think that it blends more natural in, and I think when you use a layer node, it stands out a little too much for my liking, but I will do another video on how to do skin tones using layer nodes, but today we're going to just focus on parallel nodes, and let's make that look. So, let's warm this entire image up. Let's go down to number two, and in our temperature, let's bring it right up. And then let's add some of that nice green in to separate it. So in our tint, let's bring it right in. We'll even do a fair bit. Okay, looks pretty good. Now we need to darken this area. So let's create a nice contrast curve. Make another point down here, so I don't crush those blacks. And then let's bring it down a little bit. Alrighty, so we're going from this look here to this look here. And as you can see, our skin tones are a little bit too orange for me. And I feel like we need to add a little bit more teal into these shadows. So let's do that. So in our look, let's push a little bit of green into those shadows. So let's go to our shadows, obviously. Push a little bit of green in, so that looks pretty good. So a little bit too green, so let's just take out some of it by using our low, which only affect the number corresponding with that. So we've gone from here to here, so we're looking pretty good. That's a couple of things that I'm going to do. We need to fix these skin tones up a little bit. So we need to be a little bit more green to really blend in with our area. And we need to take some of this down, and this shirt is a little bit distracting. So let's go back to our skin tones first. And this is why it's always good to have a different node for your skin tones. And then we can come back and refine those skin tones. So we're gonna push some tealy green into the highlights. Now to keep those skin tones warm, Push some warmth into the mid-tones. I'm going to leave the shadows as is. In the high range, what you want to do is move it around and you'll get a nice looking skin tones. If you go too low, it's all going to be that blue that we pushed in. If you go too high, all your skin tones are going to be one layered colour. What you want to do is you really want to blend that teal and that warm together. So, I would say that there looks pretty good. And in our lows, let's just move that around. We have something we like. And even in our curves, let's just move that around to get a much more interesting looking image. Because again, the focus is on this guy. So that's our skin tones before. And that's our skin tones afterwards. And as you can see, we're really separating that skin a lot better. The highlights look really nicely blended in. His face is standing out a lot better. Looks really good. So now let's focus on getting rid of this shirt and maybe bringing some of this down a little bit. 
but I think we'll keep that saturation, but I think it's just more about blurring this area out. In this note here, let's call this one shirt. And let's just take some of this color down. It's a little bit too much for me. Let's make a simple power window around it. And using our curves, the third one, let's select that color. Then it comes up in your little curve here. And just bring it out a little bit to get a nice even selection. All right, so we're going from here to here. And as you can see, it's not a massive change, but I do feel like it fits the scene a lot better. Now, the thing that we've forgotten to do, or that I've forgotten to do, is we haven't actually tracked our image. We haven't tracked our skin, we haven't tracked this shirt. So let's go back and do that real quick. Alrighty, so we're in our skin node. Let's bring up our power window. Let's go down to track. So before we start tracking, let's actually see what happens in this scene. It's always important to know what goes on before you start tracking. So it looks around. Okay, so he steps out of frame and he also steps into frame. Alrighty, so let's track that. Well, let's track using the frame. Now I know I always track using the frame and not auto, which is the clip, because I feel like it's just not very good. Let's say our first point is here. So around about there. So good so far. Now let's take this window out because we don't actually need it in until he jumps in. So he jumps in, make another point. Drinking coffee or tea, pretty sure it's tea. Pretty sure I know because that is me. Oop, a little bit lost there, it's okay. Cool, so our track looks good. Now let's do the same for the shirt. This should be much easier. So let's make a point. And again, take it right out until we need it. Comes in. And again, just about adding those points in. Doesn't have to be frame by frame. Because DaVinci will fill in the gaps. There we go. That looks pretty good. So in this node here, let's blur out this area here. So let's use our power window. Bring it right out. So if you don't have the studio version of DaVinci Resolve, you can come back in here with the blur and bring it up. And that'll blur out this area. And you really want to soften this out because it will look very obvious that you have a blur effect on. So I make it very big and very soft. And I think we can actually take some of the saturation down. So let's go to our curves and highlight that area and just bring it down just a little bit. Now we could probably desaturate this a little bit more. So before, and afterwards, and as you can see, our tension is, again, focused on this character here, which is the most important person in the scene. Let's go a little bit more crazy with it. Let's make it even more greener than it actually already is. Also, I think we need to warm up this scene. Let's go to our look, and let's warm it up. Way too much. It's probably a little too much. So that's looking pretty good. So this is what we had beforehand. So this is our look node, and then this is afterwards. So as you can see, we have really nice separation from the skin tones and the background. We could probably blend it in a little bit more though. I think it's a little too orange. Also, I think this is still a little too much. So I'm gonna create a, another power window for this and really bring it right down. So let's make another parallel node. So again, Alt-P, and let's select this bad boy. And we'll just bring it down in terms of saturation. So again, Hubert saturation, make that selection. So this is the look beforehand, and then this is afterwards. Really is looking a lot better. Really taking the eye away from here again and focus on this character here. Alrighty, so another thing we're gonna do is we're just gonna push even more green in, but I wanna push it in 
to pretty much the entire image. So let's create another parallel node. Again, Alt P. Now using our offset, we're just going to push in a little bit of green. Just the tiniest little amount. So this is our image beforehand. Then this is afterwards. And as you can see, it has just added that nice separation from subject to background. And we do have a nice like greeny look in the shadows here. Now we should go back and just blend the skin in just a little bit more. So in our skin node, again, just going to our highlights and going into the high range. And just bring it down just a little bit. That's looking a lot better. So that's our skin beforehand. And as you can see, it's really like one color, flat looking. And that's our skin tone afterwards. It's got that really nice dynamic look to it. Skin looks really nice and separated. As you can see, like you can see the teal and then you can see the warmer areas. That looks really good. Okay, great. So we've gone from this image here to this image here. It's kind of this nice, really warm look, really saturated, stylized look. Very much like that film, Amelie, which is a great film, you should check it out. Because before we started color grading, everything was pretty much in interest. The window, this area here, obviously this man here, even this cup. And then afterwards, we've gone for this much more separated character from the background look. Our focus is completely on him, and that's exactly how the scene should be. Unless you wanted to pull attention here. But, there's just a man looking out a window. What is more to look at? So that's it. Hope you enjoyed the video. There's many other looks you can do with this footage. You can actually create a, I guess, kind of dusk scene. Or maybe the sun's going down scene. Which looks like this. So as you can see, it's very blue. Very nice, soft lighting. And again, this is the exact same footage. I've just graded it down. I think I'll actually make a video on how I achieved this look. I think it looks really cool. It is a lot simpler to do than you think. I think a video like this would be really interesting. Let me know what you guys think, and I'll show you how to make it. Anyway, if you like this type of stuff, make sure to subscribe. I've been Drew from Gingo Productions. Hope you have a great day, and I'll see you later.